What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Planet Coaster. In the last episode, I went through and tried to reconfigure the ride right in front of us. Was previously called the Timmy Turner, now called the Sloth after X Silent Sloth X. I'm pretty sure was your username. Correct me if I'm wrong. Today, we are actually starting the episode off with a coaster that's already built. I haven't finished the queue yet. That's something I want to accomplish today. But, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the underground. This is a very unique coaster design, in my opinion. I know I received a couple of comments on the last video. You know, people were unsure if they really wanted to see kind of the same thing that I did in my previous Planet Coaster Let's Play, which I totally understand. Again, that was the main reason that I stayed away from this game for so long is I didn't really have any more ideas. I did everything that I wanted to do, but there was one thing that I wanted to do that I never actually got around to doing, and that is an underground roller coaster specifically for the mining coaster, the coaster that looks like, you know, mine carts. I guess that, that's more Minecrafty, isn't it? I don't know if they're actually called mine carts, but let me uh, toggle my different camera mode. I know it's, it's a little loud, in here but this is the coaster station for the underground i think it turned out really really well it is still lacking just a, a teeny bit of decoration but i think that's something that we could probably tackle today no problem now what i was going for with this one was basically an underground sort of spooky ride that anyone and everyone could ride all ages kids teens parents anyone and i think i did actually accomplish that so now that a couple of the Guests are gonna get loaded up onto the train. I figure it's probably a good time we just hop in the front seat and uh, we'll just kind of go on a little cruise here. But it is going to be very, very dark. Now, I am planning on adding lights in here, but for the time being, I'm just gonna turn on my manual light. So a good majority of this ride actually had to be built underground and then I had to lift the terrain up over the tracks. That was really the only way I was going to perfect this and uh, and get it to the way that I wanted it to be. So as you can see right here, this whole area would be dark. There's a little bit of grass under the tracks here, so you won't even notice a thing. It'll look something like this, right? Complete and utter darkness. But the parts that have more of the rocky look on, on the walls, those are the parts where I'm either going to add animatronics or lights into. I did not think this ride was going to be this loud, to tell you the truth. But there's a couple of fast parts, there's a couple of slow parts. This part right here will be the slowest part of the ride, and that's because this is the area where I want to put a bunch of animatronics along the side, kind of where that rocky area is off to the left. The reason I want to do this is there's actually a ride called the Underground at my local theme park. Again, it's a very small theme park. I'm really not even sure the ride is still there. However, I took a ton of inspiration from that and just sort of ran with it. I have a feeling that this could be pretty cool if I do the animatronic stuff right. I don't know if I want to do pirate stuff, if I want to try to do more spooky things, if I want to do like the red coats. Kind of just depends on where things take us, but that's exactly what we're going to be tackling in today's episode is sort of finishing up this coaster, trying to make it something that is actually worth riding because the coaster rating, it's not the best. It's its actually really, really bad. But the ride length is long enough, and I think that the overall animatronic factor of it, you know, with it sort of being more of a show ride rather than just a standard coaster, I think that's gonna kind of make up for the lack of excitement and, uh, and fear and nausea and whatever else. This is probably the second most slow area of the track, and that's mainly because I went so deep underground that how do I bring it back up? Chain lift. That's really the only option. I could have possibly done a, a big drop to a more gradual climb, but chain lifts were cheaper, easier, and uh, just overall better, in my opinion. But here you can see the train coming back into the station. I just think it looks good, dude. It looks really, really nice. I do have some ambient speakers around here too that theoretically should add to the spookiness factor a little bit. I think this one is a mining ambiance. It's ambiance, right? Not ambience. And then this one's just spooky overall. I, I don't even remember what it was called. So let's head back up top here. I think 
a good place to probably start on this ride would be to uh, to finish up the queue here because as you can kind of tell, it's uh, it's lacking some structure. I don't even know what the scenery bonus of this ride would be right now. I haven't looked at it yet, but I can assume it's probably pretty high just due to the amount of decoration we have over here. But before we get to that, I do want to show you guys a couple of additional things that I did over here to the sloth. Starting off with this custom fence. I really wanted a, a nice tall fence. I wanted nice thick wide boards on this thing and I found a board somewhere. I don't even remember where. I kind of just made it work. I made little fence sections and uh, just kind of put them back to back and kept them going all the way around here. But the idea behind that is in my previous park or previous parks, I should say, I, I never did put in any sort of safety features. There might have been railing on some paths, but if you go to an actual theme park, the areas they don't want people to go in, especially kids, they will just put up a nice tall fence that, you know, kids can't jump. Only real tool bags would actually try to get over the fences. So I did that. I added a little fountain over here just because. And then I also added a couple of, I think these are birch trees. They're maple trees, maple trees. This sort of guard around them that I thought looked kind of cool and then just did some random bushes and shrubbery and stuff around that. But I do think that does help the scenery rating overall for this ride. It was already maxed out, but now it's even better. All right, now enough yapping. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, and get right into it. So the idea behind this, you guys have kind of seen this design before. It's definitely nothing new for me. However, it does have a new wall texture, which I think works really well for the underground just because it's, it's kind of rustic. It's a little bit beaten up. It just kind of fits the theme. So this section up at the top, that will be the only section that actually has this rustic looking wall. Everything else is just gonna be pillars and whatever you call the things on the top. I, I don't even remember. Like a pergola? Is it still technically a pergola if it's massive? So this will probably be a very brief time lapse, but it will be a time lapse nonetheless. So I will see you guys here in just a second. go. It is really pretty simple, but um, whenever you add a structure over the queue, I really think it improves the look of everything, especially with this one. It's kind of cool because while it is still technically underground, the queue itself, it sticks out just enough to sort of pique your interest. Like, hmm, I wonder where that ride goes. And if you guys are wondering, whoops, I do still have my light on. If you are wondering how I was able to do the sign here on my own custom fence. Literally all I did was add in a regular sign that's already in the game and just pushed it through the fence just enough to the point where only the text was uh, was peeking out or clipping through, I guess you could say. And I kind of like that. I'm definitely gonna utilize that more often. I don't know with how many other rides I'll actually do that on, but on this one, it's definitely fitting. I made this path over here. It's not actually a staff path. There aren't actual staff paths in Planet Coaster. That's something that's only in Planet Zoo. I think I might have even said staff path in the previous episode, but I'm just very wrong. Most of the things that I say, especially when it comes to this game, are going to be incorrect. But I made this so that I could have another staff facility just behind the queue for this ride. Now I put it over here because it wouldn't make much sense to place it down over here because then the mechanic would have to walk from all the way over here to clear over to this side because they do enter in the rides from the exit. They're one of the only, I would call it an NPC in the game that will enter the ride via the exit. So I put it over here rather than up next to this because I think there's still a good possibility that we could have either a food court area, a flat ride, or another coaster entirely in this area as well. And that could even sort of tie into this mountain section. So let me know if you guys think I should do a coaster, flat ride, concession stand area right here, or if I should just leave it empty. I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. So far, I do think the overall layout of the park is kind of working in a weird sort of way. I know that the guests do have to walk a long, 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 long ways just to get to our only two rides in the park so far. But once we start branching out, adding some more things, I think it'll be good. So now that we've pretty well completed the top side, let's jump back into the super noisy area that is 
the actual coaster station. I just, dude, I just can't get over how good this looks. It literally looks, I wish I had a picture for it, but I couldn't find anything online. It literally looks exactly the same as the coaster that I got all the inspiration for this one from. So let's turn on our torch light here and we're just gonna head into the tunnel until we find our first animatronic section. I don't know how many lights I'm going to put in here necessarily. I feel like it might be better if we just leave it dark in most places and then all the spots where there are animatronics, we light those up. So this is the first section here, just a nice little plane. I think I'm gonna put some miners in here. There is an animatronic with a, I think it's a paleontologist actually. So he's not gonna look very scary, but he does have a pickaxe and he's swinging it down at some rocks. So I think if I add in some rock decorations, maybe like a box of dynamite or something, I don't even know if any of that exists, but I'm gonna try my absolute best to make a sort of mining scene down here in the mine, I guess you could call it. And with that, I think we're gonna just cue another time-lapse because why the heck not? guys after just a little bit of time maybe like half an hour or so which yeah kind of seems like too long to be working on something as simple as this i am finally finished however you might think it looks pretty gross wait until i turn my actual light off and boom the scene is set dude it looks good it looks really really nice we got stalagmites we got a horse hookup thing. They probably wouldn't have horses in the mine, but you never know. We got a whole bunch of cargo. They didn't have dynamite, but there was an exploding barrel as you can see right there. But they do have like decorative dynamite as well as like the dynamite plunger. So I went with common things like that, added a little bit of decoration here and there. Now these two dude bro bras, they're obviously mining for coal, right? Or gold or silver or whatever, however, this dude, he's just got a shovel. They are just archaeologists or paleontologists or what have you. So I couldn't have him just look like he was just digging in the sand for no reason. So I put a bison skull on the ground. I don't know. Maybe he got intrigued and was like, you know, I should probably dig this up. We have an animatronic scorpion that looks way too realistic, in my opinion. We got a massively unrealistic purple beetle right here, which... Again, just kind of adds to the aesthetic. Over here, this is their kind of little campsite area. We got a ladder that leads to nowhere and the start of a mine, potentially, as well as one of these mine carts. And a massive anaconda. That's not an anaconda. Python. Uh, it's a snake, okay? It's a snake. I don't know what kind of snake it is, but it's a big, slimy looking snake. And I do think that about wraps it up for this area. I did, however, add some speakers down here. If you guys can kind of hear like water trickling, the occasional swing of a pickaxe. So that's what we got going on in here but let's continue on dude i haven't seen the train i guess coaster pass recently at all it's been a long time since i saw it go by i almost wonder if it maybe broke down and no it's it's definitely still still rolling yeah dude look at that q scenery rating 100 percent you love to see it. We are going to be losing money on all of the rides because since we're in sandbox mode here, I went ahead and just moved all the ticket prices to zero because we don't really care if they pay us to ride on these rides at all. We have unlimited monies. So that's kind of cool. But let's continue on now, pass up our first little mining operation here. I think that's gonna look great. I can't wait to ride this ride after we get all of the animatronic scenes finished up just to see how it looks when you actually ride through it. So let's keep going. We gotta go find the next spot, the next slow spot. All right, this is a potential spot, but I think what I'm gonna do here instead is add waterfall type things at the top, potentially, 
and maybe, I don't know, the mine ambient sound effect again in the water, because I mean, there is water down here. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but there is definitely water in the bottom of this thing, so I feel it's only fitting if we make the sound reflect that. But I'm going to add some lights up on the top here. But right when it goes down, I think I want a light right at the bottom. I'll go through and, and move them to a, a better position, uh, a better well-hidden position here in just a moment. That's not bad. We definitely need another one in the center, though. And then we're going to bump them up so the light doesn't actually show through the rock, but the, the actual light source itself is still there. All right, that works for me. Next, we have to get some speakers in here. I'm putting them in front of each support pillar for the coaster. I don't know if that really makes a difference at all. I'm not even sure if you can hear the sounds when you're riding the coaster, but we're gonna find out, dang it. And with that done, now we have to add some sort of waterfall effect sort of like a, a light misting that's gonna rain down on the guests in the coaster. So this one's gonna go there, next one's gonna get placed down right there, and oh god. Trying to, dude, trying to do anything in a cave like this is just miserable, just horrible overall. There we go. That adds some nice ambiance there. I'm a fan. I am a fan. I think I would ride this. Truly, I do. Oh god, we gotta turn our light back on. There we go. All right, on to the next spot. I think it's this one, but I'm gonna follow the track just to make sure I didn't make another one somewhere else along the along the line. So the coaster doesn't actually slow down until about here, which kind of makes me want to just start the animatronic section here because this is massive. I mean, this is a big area for animatronics. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. So let's leave this area blank for now. I want to say it slows down to eight miles an hour, like right about here. So I think this is where we're probably going to start the animatronics. And then we have another smaller section over here that maybe we could do some pirate stuff or just some spooky things in general. I don't know. I'd kind of like to stick with the mining theme since it is a mine after all. Like it's it's a cave essentially. So we're going to start right over here and I know, I'm sorry, I have to do it. We're gonna cue the time lapse again. It would be miserable for you guys to watch me place down every single item in real time as it happens. It, it would just suck. So here we go, time lapse. <laughs> Okay, so remember how I said something along the lines of I was gonna do the pirate theme or the archaeologist slash paleontologist theme? And then now you see it and you're like, you didn't do that? Yeah. <laughs> so as I was sort of like filtering through all of the different objects and stuff that I could use that had some sort of animation to them, the first thing that I noticed was this button off to the left here. And I was like, man, that would be so cool. I could do like a temple run type of theme, sort of like Indiana Jones, right? So that's kind of what I was going for here. Uh, of course, feel free to let me know what you guys think about this. We got some scorpion boys over here. We got a freaking, like this is, this is literally the exact door from Temple Run, if you guys ever played that on your mobile phones. Here, I made a lava slash magma pit with a rope bridge that goes over top. Odds are you probably wouldn't make it over this. Next, we have a, a double opening doors. I have seen people actually use these. Oh, there goes the coaster. Wow, like four people on it. That's kind of weak. Um, I have seen people use this for an actual coaster design where they have a, a temple that it's kind of a maze. The coaster kind of snakes through this temple 
So I added those in simply because I wanted to pretend as if there were multiple stages to this cave system. But also, I knew that there were a bunch of different objects in this category that I'd be able to use to fill the entire side of this. Originally, I wasn't going to start from here. This is the very tail end of it. Originally, I was only going to start... Wait for it. Oh god. I can't even see it now without my light on. I was going to start here. This was the original starting point. Obviously, I didn't do that because there's just a ton of different things to use. After the lava pit, we had the doors. Up here, we have a big old snake boy who's just hanging out on a tree branch. Then we have two mummies. We have one that's just kind of doing his mummy thing over here. And then this boy, he's going to try to reach out and grab you. Obviously, he's quite a bit of ways away from the actual coaster track, but... Still, it's the thought that counts. We got a coffin, and then these were probably the coolest object that the adventure pack adds in, in my opinion. I'm a sucker for anything automotive, so I really, really like these old safari sort of adventure. Like, it's Indiana Jones. This is stuff they would be driving in Indiana Jones. We got like a, a Willy's Jeep over here, which is pretty dope. And the headlights work too, so it kind of illuminates and gives you the impression that they are moving forward through this cave system. Then you get up to here. This is just a regular old bridge. I really couldn't think of anything cool to do here. But at the end, we got some spikes that pop up. It's pretty dope. Another little button thing. That's going to actually activate these poison darts right here. You can see flying out of the wall. And then if the poison darts don't kill you, this is kind of like American Ninja Warrior, really, if you think about it. A aside from the part where these things are made to kill you, where Ninja Warriors more like made to stump you and throw you into water, not kill you immediately. But if the poison darts don't do it, there's a massive boulder that comes rolling towards you that's bound to do it. And if you're still feeling lucky, we got some big old logs with stakes that pop out and will probably stab you to death. Then we have a saw blade that comes out of the wall. Very sick. If that doesn't kill you, we got a giant boulder that just comes literally out of nowhere. And if you can dodge that, then we have these two logs that'll probably, I don't know, unless you're like eight foot five, I don't think they're gonna come anywhere near you, but you know, they're there. And then lastly, if you made it through with your vehicle, again, it's it's pretty high up. I couldn't really lower it down anymore. You got a, a big swinging ax that would probably demolish anything in its way. And then I put some biplanes in here because why not? They look kind of cool. But that's it. That's the that's the whole area. Now, I've only seen the coaster come by one time and it seems to be illuminated enough. Oh, here we go. We got some people coming by, but it seems to be illuminated enough and slow enough so that you could actually look at the stuff you're passing. Otherwise, if it was super fast, you probably wouldn't be able to see a dang thing. And that brings us to our last area here. I have literally no idea what I'm going to do in this one. I thought about maybe doing like the spooky one. Oh, hang on. I don't own the spooky one. I don't own studios either. I have vin, no, I don't have vintage either. World's Fair? I got World's Fair. That's not really that scary though. Yeah, I have no idea what to do here. I might even just fill in this area. This thing is way longer than I thought it was gonna be. So I might even just fill in this area or I, I suppose I could leave it and just not put anything there. It's gonna be pitch black anyways. You're not even gonna notice. <laughs> Literally won't even be able to see that anything is supposed to be there. So I might just leave that. Let's continue on here. Make sure I don't have any other ones that I'm forgetting about. And this should be coming into the end right here. Perfect. All right, boys and girls, let's uh, let's hop on board. I should probably turn off my light though so we get the full experience and uh, we'll just go ahead and ride this sucker. I am going to drink my coffee while we ride this. I don't know if you guys can tell, it is very early in the morning. I'm not exactly awake yet, but I had this really good idea and I was like, I have to do it and I have to do it right now. I mean, it's pitch black. You're not gonna be able to see anything anyway, so I don't really know what the point of riding this is, but off to the left here, that's our first little mining area. Very sick, we passed it pretty quick. That's kind of unfortunate. All right, I'll just leave, I'll leave my light on so you guys can actually experience the ride. 
I think this turned out great. Oh, here's this area. That looks good too, with the water coming down. I dig that. You can kind of get a sneak peek down there. All right, this is the fast zone. Here we go. This is the temple run area. Dude, this just looks great. It looks so, so good. I really like how everything's lit up. It's not too bright. I wouldn't necessarily get scared if I was riding this ride, but it would certainly be something cool to look at, especially if it was like Indiana Jones themed or whatever. But I like that. That looks very cool. And then again, this is the area you wouldn't even notice because it's pitch black. Also still very slow through here. I should probably adjust that, but what the heck, man? Coffee's officially gone. I'm still not fully awake yet, but let's freaking do this. We're about done with the ride, I'm pretty sure. So when I was building this, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but rather than trying to tunnel through the ground using the coaster, like while building it, what I did instead is basically dug an enormous pit all the way down, as far down as I could possibly go. And then I built the coaster inside with the tunneling feature turned on, enable tunneling or whatever it's called. So I had that turned on. And then after I had the coaster complete, I backfilled it then with uh, terrain again, filled it all the way up to the top, smoothed everything off on the top side, and then it left us with this. I did still have to go through and do some smoothing of the inside or the cave walls because it was kind of jagged in some spots and didn't really look right. But all in all, dude, I think this ride actually turned out, for once, turned out exactly like what I had envisioned initially. And I'm very, very happy about that. And here we are coming into the station. Dude. It doesn't get any better than this. You will never see me make another ride like this because it, it has taken me all morning. It has quite literally taken me all morning. I started this at 7.30. It's now 2.34 in the afternoon. So yeah, you could you could say it's, it's taken some time. And then this is the exit. I don't know if we walked through the exit path yet. Pops you out over here. But I do think that about wraps it up for this episode. If you guys think that you could do this better than I can, I completely believe you. I just, I really don't want to spend any more time on this one, but it seriously turned out so, so good. And I'm super, super proud of this one. Let me know, of course, what you guys think about this. Let me know if you want me to do something similar later. Maybe I could try it again in maybe a different theme or something around it, but I do think that is going to do it for this episode. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like. Leave a comment to help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.